closer. Life without limitations. As a recognized leader in prosthetic technology, we have made a commitment to enabling a life without limitations for our customers. This has led our research and development teams to create innovative products using the latest in technology and materials to make prosthetic components that closely mimic the kinematics of normal human locomotion. You, the prosthetist, are the critical link between the prosthetic technology and the amputee. OSER currently offers three different knee systems. The Mauk Hydraulic Knee, the Total Knee Geometric Locking System, and our Weight Activated Stance Control Knee System, better known as the TKO. Each knee system is designed to meet the specific needs of your clients, depending on their varying levels of voluntary control and activity. The MAUK systems are sophisticated yet robust designs made of ultralight materials such as carbon graphite, Kevlar, aluminum, and titanium. Clients who demonstrate moderate to high voluntary control and activity levels will most benefit from this knee design. The MAUK knee system is intended for those who have the ability to vary their cadence and who will take advantage of the yielding hydraulic stance control feature when descending ramps, stairs, and uneven terrain. The Mauk Knee is a single-axis hydraulic swing and stance control system, or swing-only system, that compensates for changes in cadence. The Mauk system is easily adjusted with a simple turn of the dial for both flexion and extension resistance settings. The Mauk system allows for versatility of function. The manual locking feature allows the user to maximize knee stability in unusual conditions, such as climbing a ladder and descending steep slopes. The swing-only mode permits a variety of activities where stance control is not required, such as cycling and running. You must first make sure the socket, knee, and foot are properly aligned. Using an alignment tool, such as a laser or plumb line, position the socket so that the alignment reference line bisects the lateral wall of the socket and falls through or slightly posterior to the knee bolt. If the line is too far anterior to the knee bolt, it may require greater effort to create the necessary hyperextension moment to disengage stance control and allow for fluid initiation of knee flexion. On the other hand, premature knee flexion may result from alignment that is too far posterior to the knee bolt. Make sure appropriate adduction and flexion of the socket are included in the alignment of the prosthesis. Have your clients stand with equal weight on both legs and check that the pelvis is level. Use your alignment tool to make sure your static alignment is correct. In all dynamic alignments, think stability first, performance second. After stability is achieved through stance control adjustment, work on enhancement of performance through swing control optimization. The Mauk Knee Stance Control System is designed to provide hydraulic yielding resistance to knee flexion when the prosthesis is loaded. The stance resistance or yielding rate can be adjusted to the user's body weight and applied loads with the adjustment screw near the U-lever on the piston rod. Have the user move from a standing to seated position. By transferring load posterior to knee center, the user may ride the hydraulic stance resistance using little effort to move into the seated position. Resistance can be adjusted through use of the stance control adjustment screw. The screw only adjusts one-third of a rotation. Full counterclockwise rotation to the 8 o'clock position creates maximum yield rate or minimum stance resistance. Full clockwise rotation to the 12 o'clock position produces minimum yield rate or maximum stance resistance. Do not exceed the one-third rotation. Adjustment of stance control resistance should be optimized on stairs and ramps for best performance and comfort for the user.
proper adjustment will allow for natural deceleration and secure support when descending a variety of terrain. Stance resistance is eliminated by producing a hyperextension moment at the knee for a tenth of a second. Deactivation of stance control is necessary in order to initiate knee flexion and swing phase. Production of this hyperextension moment is performed by transferring load anterior to the knee axis, that is, loading the toe of the prosthetic foot with the knee in full extension. It is also necessary for rapidly moving to a seated position without the use of stance resistance. The Mauk knee system is designed to provide variable cadence control through hydraulic resistance of the flexion and extension movements during swing phase based on the changes in the user's walking speed. Resistance setting can be adjusted manually through the rotation of the cap on top of the control cylinder. Have the amputee walk with flexion and extension resistance settings minimized. Note the excessive degree of terminal impact and heel rise. During dynamic alignment, always adjust flexion resistance prior to extension resistance. First, turn the cap relative to the indicator mark for flexion. The word hydraulic is spelled out on the cap. H is minimum resistance, A is medium resistance, and K is maximum resistance. Continue adjustment of flexion resistance until heel rise is matched to that of the sound limb. Remember your setting. Now, adjust the extension resistance by turning the control cap all the way in one direction until the two controls engage. Clockwise rotation increases resistance. Counterclockwise decreases resistance. Continue to increase extension resistance until terminal impact is eliminated and rate of swing extension matches the sound limb. When extension resistance is set, reset flexion resistance to the previously adjusted value. Have the user walk at their self-selected walking speed, slow, and fast speeds to ensure proper adjustment and comfort. Don't forget to instruct the user on proper adjustment of the hydraulic swing control settings. Please keep in mind that foot choice can affect gait dynamics. For example, pairing the Mauk XG with the Soteras will decrease shock to the residual limb. Absorption of torque caused by transverse pelvic rotation may reduce shear forces applied to the residual limb, creating a more comfortable and natural walking pattern for the user. So you're gonna push into my hand one, then two, and now in this step, you're gonna take a step forward good, and now come back. What the mouth knee allows is for the amputee to be able to take full advantage of the power that they can generate from their pelvis. Because as they walk, they can walk either as slow and as genteel as they would like, or they can go right up to running and run with as much power as they would like, and the mouth knee will stay with them the entire distance. By restoring transverse pelvic rotation, you allow the amputee to power through shift their way forward, and permit the prosthetic knee to work the way it was designed. When working with the amputees who have been fitted with a MALC hydraulic system, I've noticed through the years is that the flexion and extension resistance has been set almost to a minimum. This is because they lift and they kick the limb rather than using their pelvis and bringing the pelvis over the prosthetic foot so that they shift their center of mass to the sound limb and so that they get the full power that they can achieve out of their pelvis. By implementing resistive gait training, we're able to restore the power of the pelvis back to the amputee. And as soon as the amputee begins to feel that power, then we see they walk faster. And as they do so, we see increased knee flexion and extension. Immediately, we increase the flexion and extension resistance, they have a smoother gait, and they feel much more confident in their gait.